This is episode number 20 for the podcast. We are getting up there, we're getting up there, got our, our foundation set. Um, and so we're rolling through these episodes. We are about wrapped up with Summer League at this point. I think two or three more days until the, the championship game. So I think every team probably has one or two games left to play there in Summer League. Um, we saw Wembenyama get himself a little bounce back game, um, which is really good to see before the Spurs shut him down. A lot of the, the um, top rookies um, are getting shut down in Summer League, you know, for obvious reasons. You, you get the, your couple of games, you get your, your shine in and then. The last part of summer league, a lot of that, you know, you get some of those G League guys um, and, and guys on two-way deals to come in and get some extra reps and really get to, to potentially show the franchises that they can battle for a full-time roster spot moving into into training camp. So um, we are in a great spot with summer league, but today this episode is going to be all about ranking NBA young cores. That has been one of the biggest topics on Twitter. Bleacher Report, ESPN, First Take, everybody's talking about who's got the best young core in the NBA. So today, we're going to go through and give you our top 10 lists um, for the best young cores uh, across the league. But before we get into all that, we're going to go ahead and get the housekeeping out of the way, as always. Um, if you are on YouTube, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to the, the channel. Um, if you are on any of the audio platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, please be sure to go ahead and leave a five-star review. Um, and set the show to pre-download to your phone. Go and get your girl phone. Do the same thing. Five-star review, all of that. We appreciate it. Um, and subscribe and follow the, the socials that you see on the bottom of the screen as well. At Off The Glass Pod on Instagram and at Off The, Glad Pod, Off the Glass Podcast on TikTok. Who a lot to go through. Hmm. Um, before we hop into... Wemby's bounce back game and some of the, the other summer league shout outs that we want to give. As always, how are we doing today, Dane? You know, honestly, man, I'm just I'm just a little sad because we don't really got no sports going on. Like we got the summer league, but you know, all the guys is getting shut down. So it's just is it we we approaching that dead period, but you know, we still, you know, gotta pump out this podcast, pump out this content. So I'm excited to talk about the young cores in the league though. For sure, for sure. I making this list was extremely difficult and i think that just goes to show how much talent in the league there is right now we put Mm. we we set the criteria at age 25 and below um and looking at it from that perspective i mean you could go you can make arguments 14 15 crack the top 10 right um, was tough to make those decisions and let alone trying to get into top five top three so definitely excited to get get into the list but like you said we would be remiss if we did not talk about Wemby's bounce back game um that happened I think the, the day we recorded the the last pod happened later that day um and it had kind of been reported before that the Spurs were probably going to give him two maybe three games at summer league Again, like we said, the first one, definitely rougher on the, the offensive end. Didn't shoot the ball great. Second game was a massive, massive change on the offensive side of the ball. The defense was still elite as it was in the first game. And the Spurs says, Spurs said that was all we need to see. We're good. Right. <laughs> Shut them up. down. We'll <laughs> save them for, for preseason and regular season, um, which is definitely the right call. And there's some more reports even came out that um, they basically told him going into summer league, like, you know, there's no no leash on you. Like, just go try stuff. I think it's really what they said. Like, go and just experiment. And that's why you saw so many times he get the rebound and he's pushing the ball up the court. He's handling it and pick and roll, handling the ball, looking to drive. He did his – in the second game, he's really feeling it. He did his little signature one-legged three. Um, yeah, that's so why he, I knew he had it going. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but, like, that's the point of summer league, right? Like, you mm-hmm. let these guys go out with – a more expanded role and just see what they're able to do. And you have somebody that's potentially as dynamic as Wimbanyama, that's the way to go about it. So um, in this game, particularly, let me make sure I pull up his stats and, um, and uh, get all of that right. Um, but he definitely had a, a much better shooting game, um, finished the game with 27 points, um, 27 points, was it 12 rebounds. 12 rebounds. Mm-hmm. Um, and, Two or three blocks as well um, on, on much better shooting. 
um, than the uh, in the first game, which was needed for all the people who are out here like saying he's a bust after the first game. The lot, all that noise was quiet <laughs> after this game, which is good. Thanks. Didn't happen in the first place. It didn't happen either way. Like we said before, summer league not taking it to either of the extremes. Um, but what did you, what did you see from Wemby in this game offensively uh, that impressed you, and how much of it do you think will translate? Not necessarily day one of the regular season, but just kind of throughout his rookie year as a whole. Um, how much of what you saw do you think he could emulate? You know, on the NBA stage. I think in game two, um, I, I saw him be a lot more calm out there, a lot more in control. Um, in the first game, it, it felt like he was, like you said, they, they just told him, like, go out there, you know, try stuff. And, like, you just saw a lot of isos, just driving to the basket. Like, the offense as a whole for the Spurs just looked like it had no structure. You know what I mean? Like, it just looked like Wimby's the star. Let's give it to him. Back off. Let him work. And, like, the, I don't think that's going to be his strong suit like that's not the best way to put him in, in positions to score and like succeed so I felt like he played a little bit more like a traditional big man he played kind of like a like a stretch five basically this game like you saw a lot of times he was um got to the middle of the floor got to the middle like at the free throw line um he was running a lot of pick and rolls pick and pops a lot less like just isos on the perimeter like let me just go to work like obviously he'd done that a couple times I think his first bucket was like the pull-up midi um, he got to like the elbow and shot a nice pull-up jumper. So like he can do that at times, but the offense shouldn't be just give him the ball, let him go to work on the perimeter. Like that's not going to be the way to succeed for him. So like I said, you saw him play a lot more like a traditional big man. He has some post-ups. Um, he has some offensive rebounds. Like he just played like a, a more traditional big that can step out and do other things. And I feel like that's going to be the best way that his offense is going to translate into the league. So I like that a lot. I definitely like that a lot. Like we said, the shot eventually is gonna fall. Like the shot, it it looks too good of a shot to it's be so bad. It's so fluid. Yeah, like it looks too good of a shot to just be bad. Like eventually the shot was gonna fall, and mm -hmm. like I said, that's what happened. Like he let the game come to him. He got a couple easy ones, and then you know you saw he stepped out from three, knocked that down. He got his confidence going, and um, yeah, I feel like as far as what's gonna translate into the, the NBA. Um, if we're just talking offensively, because I think we both agree, like, defense is going to translate immediately. Like, I don't think there's going to be no adjustment as far as that. So, um, offensively, I think, like I said, playing more like a, a traditional big, um, letting the game come to you a little bit. At times, you can step out to the perimeter and do what you got to do. Like, he's still, you know, you don't want to put a leash on him, like you say. You want to let him, like, do his thing a little bit, but... Let the game come to him. Don't force things. Don't force shots. You're going to get some offensive rebounds. You're going to get easy, like, put back dunks and layups just because he's so tall. So I feel like all that stuff is going to translate. And if the shot is falling and then when he actually starts feeling it and getting to that um, tween crossover pull-up <laughs> midi, like, then it's the look out. Because I feel like that that is going to take some time for that to be automatic. Like, he's not going to come in the league and just be Kevin Durant instantly. Mm -hmm. But I feel like towards the end of his rookie year like that's when you'll really start to see the offensive game like okay like this guy he he's different he's different so i feel like yeah his, his game is going to translate for sure yeah i think draymond was on paul george's podcast and he summed it up i think really well especially for what we're going to see from him probably even his first couple of years of his career what we saw him do in france all the you know highlights all of that is not going to fly in the NBA. <laughs> nah. It's not, it's not going to be that easy. Um, but to your point, right, the shot is going to drop, right? The ability to stretch the floor is always going to make him a threat. The ability to handle the ball will make it so that he can attack closeouts. He can take slower bigs off the dribble. I don't know if we'll ever really see a point where he's, like, consistently handling the ball. Um, just – at that size, I mean, you even saw it in the second game. Like, you sent a, a guard at him, like, he can get his pocket ripped easy because right. the ball got to go about six yeah. feet. <laughs> yeah, like, he's just too tall, bro. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know if we'll ever see that. But, like you said, the offensive rebounds, the easy putbacks. He had, a, he had one where he tipped it up off the glass, then finally caught the rebound, and then just like little flush, like barely even jumped, just dunked it over somebody. Like, what What do you do in that scenario? You just are giving up too much size. Um, and like you said, when he started feeling it, he said the, the little tween midi pull up, it's looking fluid. It's 
uncontestable. Like we we talked a lot mm-hmm. in the past about guys like you know Dirk or KD or even Jokic as of late. Like just with their size and their release point on their jump shot, it's really hard to contest. Like he's got almost half a foot on these guys. Yeah, <laughs> he can't even see you if you're trying to contest your his shot. Unless you're maybe baseline got to be like six eleven seven foot. The pull up midi was good defense. Like it was good right. defense, but like he just he you're rolls not over. you're not ever in a million years gonna block it. And it's like no. I genuinely don't know if you can like really impede his vision at that mm-hmm. height. Yeah. Um, so I, some of it w- was definitely gonna translate. It's gonna come with time. He'll get a feel for what he can and can't get away with at the NBA level, which. Like you said, I really like your point about once we get towards the end of the, the regular season, we'll really start to see like him have, you know, he's got some games under his belt. He's experimented. You know, there's very low pressure on him. The Spurs are not going to be a playoff team this year. So it's like there's no pressure to have to win now or play a certain way. So once we start getting to like game 50, 60, I think we'll see he, he really gets comfortable in this is pulling stuff out of his bag regularly that he knows that he can get to. Um, and then obviously again, coupled with probably averaging like two and a half, three blocks a night, just cause he's seven and five and patrolling the paint. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think for now he'll, he'll have to play next to a dedicated big body center right, um, right. just because <clears throat> of his, his shortcomings with strength, which, it's not limited to just him. I mean, you see Evan Mobley is doing the same thing in, in Cleveland right now. And he has a lot of similar deficiencies, to be honest, in terms of, you know, he, he has to get stronger, right? He's not the best screen setter in the world. Um, he's not the, the biggest body to kind of move people off of the block or prevent people from moving him off of the block as a, as a post defender. Um, and Jared Allen kind of clears some of that up for him, for him to be able to excel as a weak mm-hmm. side help defender, as a rim protector, as a switchable big. So you bring somebody in to kind of mask some of those deficiencies. Um, I think we will immediately, like, I would not be surprised if year one, he was like in all defensive team kind of contention. Mm-hmm. And he's going to be like a perennial all defensive DPOY player. Like, just off of like the same reason that like Jaron Jackson won it this year. The same reason that Evan Mobley um, was was in contention for it this year. You have somebody who's not just a, a a ridiculous rim protector, but has the mobility and is fluid enough in his movement that if he did get switched on to you know a wing or potentially a guard, it's not really just barbecue chicken. And even if they got past him, you better get the shot up quick because yeah. it's seven five coming from behind <laughs> you to, to try to pin it off the glass. So. Um, I am glad that he had the one good game before they shut it down. So we don't have to sit here and see Britney Spurs or Britney Spurs, <laughs> Britney Spears <laughs> stands, um, on my timeline. I better not see them on my Twitter ever again. I don't, they were wanna, still going at it, bro. It's I funny. don't want to, I don't want to see that ever again, bro. It's funny because like, they don't know basketball. <laughs> so they're watching it. Like I, there was a clip that was going around and Wimby got like, he had, got the rebound, drove it, and got fouled. And the, the, the Britney Spears fans was like, isn't, bas- isn't the basketball supposed to go in the basket? Like, look at him, he sucks. And like, I'm like, bro, like, you don't even understand the rules <laughs> out here trying to like clown this guy. Like, but he got fouled. Like, it, crazy. that was wild. I'm not gonna lie, that was crazy, but <laughs> yeah. Um, That's insane, bro. That's yeah. delusional. <laughs> uh, I also want to make sure that I, I touch on um, he did shoot 12 free throws in this game. It's something that I also took away from this, this second game performance from him. Um, he had a lot of moments where he sought out the contact. And, mm-hmm. again, it's it's easy to get fouled when it's like I don't think the other bigs, like you just are desperation, like jumping at him. Right. So, like, I, I understand it, but um, he, he got downhill. He would get the ball in the post and just, you know, force a tough shot and – draw a lot drew a lot of fouls that way um shot seven to 12 from the free throw line so um i think we'll we'll probably again see a lot of that maybe to even a a higher degree um and in the nba when we actually get into the regular season because again right you have almost double the fouls 
in summer league. So people are going to have to be more cautious about how they want to defend him because you'll get into foul trouble a lot quicker. So either you're going to give up easy baskets to him or you're going to put yourself in foul trouble and keep sending him to the free throw line. So it's going to become more of a, a pick your poison, um, you know, kind of scenario once we get into the NBA. But yeah, good. Glad that he had this performance so that we can, we can put all that to bed. Um, also got a shout out, shout out um, Michael DeVoe, who went crazy in this game, kind of almost stole the show. Uh, shout out to him. Almost had a 30 ball in this game. Um, was really working in the pick and roll, um, getting to all his spots, knocking down big threes, um, and helped the Blazers team close out this game because the Spurs were, were fighting for a comeback um, and, and couldn't get it done there at the end. So the Trailblazers ended up taking this one 85 to 80. But good for Wimby, good for DeVoe, who I would imagine he's had, he's put on a couple of good performances after this one. Um, for the Trailblazers team. So uh, maybe he'll be able to to find a maybe a two-way spot there in Portland now that they got a G League team. Um, so shout out to him as well. Um, any other big summer league performances um, that you've seen since we uh, last recorded? Listen, I feel like we cannot go without talking about what Jabari Smith was doing. <laughs> Jabari Smith was hoping, bro. Yep. Like, he – listen – I was watching this dude play, and it's not even just the fact that he scored 30. Like, well, I think he scored 30 in back-to-back games. It's not even the fact that he was out there scoring. It's the way he was scoring. Like, from all every spot on the court. Like, mm-hmm. I seen post work. I seen, like, ball handling off the dribble, going to the basket. I seen a step back three. I seen mid-ranges. I seen turnaround jumpers. I seen everything, like, he threw the whole offensive bag at everyone he was playing against. Like it was honestly, it was great to see. Like that, that this kid, like his development, he 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 looked really good. I'm not gonna lie. Like he looked really really good. He was out there, he was talking junk. He, he so he said to James Wiseman, mm-hmm. can't even repeat it on this pod, but he was talking crazy. <laughs> he was talking crazy to James Wiseman. I like I like seeing stuff like that. Like I seen a couple people talking about some. It's just summer league. Like you're doing this in summer league. I'm like. Bro, I don't care if we're in a church league playing against right. 70-year-olds, bro. Like, you can't guard me. I'm going to tell you, you can't guard me. Right. I like, just, listen, y'all got to let competitors be competitors, bro. I don't exactly. care what, what the stakes are. If we're playing, if you're on the court, we're going at it. Like, I don't care what it is. So, mm-hmm. I, li- I like seeing stuff like that. And just his offensive game just looked really, really good. So, definitely shout out to him. Yeah, he, that second game, because he, he's another one of those players that, that's gotten shut down. Um, after his performances, and it's rightfully so and well deserved. Because look, you have graduated from summer league. I don't think he'll play another game. Not nah, this year. He, I, mean, I think ever, you don't need to play next ever. year. Because, <laughs> uh, like you said, he was pulling out everything in his bag in that game, scoring every which way. Um, I saw him working in the post, which was good to see. Uh, he was handling the ball. Him and Tari Eason have looked. Really, really, they look really good in the summer league games they play. I think him and Tari are, are both shut down. Yeah, um, Tari's not playing either. Yeah, so it's really just just Cam Whitmore um, out there hooping for for the Rockets summer league team, who also have not lost a summer league game uh, yet. So it may be pushing to to get themselves a ring, which is crazy yeah. that they give out rings for summer league. <laughs> but uh, that's so wild. Cam yeah. Whitmore's another guy though. He was he been going crazy. It, it, I, look. Every single time I've watched him in summer league, I cannot believe that he fell to pick 20. And I feel like that's only going to get crazier and crazier when we get into the season and you see him in such a specific role. Like he's not going to even get crazy minutes a night. He's going to have flashes where it's just like, how did this guy fall to 20, 20 out of the lottery? Medical reasons. I don't that's know what crazy. I don't even know what medical reasons there are. I just that's what everyone's just saying. Medical reasons. Man, the Rockets just finesse the whole <clears> league. <throat> finesse the whole league. I'm at my Lakers and taking my 17, man. I, I, that seemed like that would have been perfect. I thought like, I thought it was like, bro, the way he kept dropping, I'm like, oh, oh yeah, we're about to get a steal. We're literally about to get a steal. Athletic wing, it just like it fits. <sighs> what do you want to play with LeBron and A D? I don't know why we didn't do it, bro. I really don't. I mean, I guess there's also 19 other teams, or I'll say, because he was projected to go the fifth pick. So I guess there's like, what, eight or like 12 ish, 15 other teams that didn't take him. So 
Yeah, that's, that's crazy. That's crazy. Um, also got to shout out uh, Keontae George again, who this dude is a bucket, bro. Bucket. <laughs> Straight <dude> bucket. <laughs> Buck it. Let me see if I can look up how much he's averaging right now in summer league. Um, Because he has been putting up crazy numbers um, for the the Jazz on, like, really good efficiency, too. Uh, Had a 26-point game um, on 9 for 15 shooting, uh, 5 of 10 from 3, 7 assists, 3 rebounds, 2 steals. Like, bro. Sky is going to be a for real, for real bucket. Nah, he's um, OD. So the Jazz are adding to to what is already a pretty solid young core there. Um, so so shout out to him as well. Um, and my guy, I keep, I'm going to keep talking about it, Leonard Miller. <laughs> he keeps coming out and putting on great performances in Summer League. Um, in that same game against the, the Jazz, going up against Keontae George, he put up 20 points, 7 of 15 from the field again, was able to knock down the long ball, 2 of 4 from 3, with 3 steals, 5 rebounds, 2 assists. The, the, the motor on the defensive side of the ball and just his really just overall hustle is, like, elite. Like, he's going to come in and have one of the best motors um, in the NBA. He just is always hustling, always looking to, to do the scrappy, dirty work. Um, the switchability at his size is going to be a great, great asset for Minnesota moving forward. Um, and if he can continue to keep this shooting up, which was going to be one of the bigger question marks, like that'll, I think, really dictate a lot of his playing time. If he can, you know, stay around, you know, mid thirties in terms of the three point percentage, like he bro, he's again, another guy. How did he fall to the second round? Like these teams yeah, are crazy. Steals. Yeah, so shout out to uh, to Leonard Miller as well. You got anybody else that you want to uh, want to touch on before we we dive into our top tens? Uh, not 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 necessarily, not necessarily. No, I'm good. The one other person I I, I want to make sure that we we mm-hmm. talk to because we he didn't get in too much love early in summer league, um, but the last couple games has really turned it up. The other Thompson twin, Asar. Oh yeah, I forgot it. Well, I forgot we forgot to talk about him. That's crazy. It's his first game. He kind of was getting like looked off. He didn't get as much shots up. But I think a lot of yeah, on him too. Uh, he kind of took a backseat to to Jane Ivy, but in the last couple of games, the, he don't look. The ball don't have to find him. He's just gonna go and get it. Right. And he had that defensive sequence. I think it was against the Raptors. The Raptors. Um, was, right. Yeah. The Raptors. Ripped a dude on the three point line, quick give and go to reverse alley oop. Mm-hmm. Royce Thompson twins are the real deal. My oh, thing is they on. just they just have the tools like athletically, like mm-hmm. like you've seen it the defensive play that he made. Like he just has all the athletic tools to be a great defender in the league. Like, bro, these these kids are crazy because they're already they're tall, they're athletic, they're fast, they're strong, like. They have great and they have like great IQ. I feel like they're both really good passers. They have a really good feel for the game. So it's just they if they really like develop and reach their full potential, like they can be excellent all around players in the NBA. Yeah, and he's a guy that can really stuff the stat sheet in this game against Toronto. He ended up with 17 points on 50 percent shooting from the field, nine rebounds, three assists, four steals, and two blocks. What I'm saying all around, bro. He just can do everything. Yeah, he uh I like I know we said it earlier, but really am rooting for both of them to just be great. Um like you said, they have the tools to do so. Um and, and they they were both were able to put it on display in summer league. Um, you know, unfortunate with with a men's injury, but you know, he'll be good and ready for you know preseason and come time for the, the start of the season in October. So um Look, shout out to both the Thompson twins. Um, and now that summer league is winding down, we're going to go ahead and get into ranking our top 10 NBA young cores. Uh, we said it at the top of the episode, but I'm going to reiterate here. This is 25 and below. So 
other people have ranked it on 22, 23 and below. So it's 25 and below, which means that there are some people eligible who may be going into year four or five or maybe even six in some cases. Guys like John Morant, Trey Young, Zion Williamson, Jaron Jackson, you know, Shea. Luka. So like, right, Luca too. Um, so keep all of that in mind as we, we give the rankings. Um, all of these people are eligible to be considered. With, you know, it's not a, a younger age cap. Um, 25 and below has been the standard for a lot of these lists. People will do best NBA players, you know, 25 and below. So I think this is good. And like I said, going through it, it made the list very, very, very difficult um, to rank them. Um, and the way that I tried to think about it um, was, again, not just like the, the top end talent, but like, thinking about the, the position that all of them are, are in, in terms of, you know, their coach, the depth. So how, like how many players deep does your young core really go? You know, if you mm-hmm. have a team like the trailblazers where it's okay, you got scoop Shaden and Anthony Simons, and then there's pretty much a big, big drop off into the next guys like this year, little versus, you know, a team like the thunder where it's like, you're going to list off like nine, 10 legit names. Like that has to factor into consideration potential again like some of these guys that we already said trey Ja, zion like you know we've kind of got a good feel for what they are and what they're projecting to be some of these guys are more raw but they you know have higher ceilings higher potential so obviously that's going to factor in as well um so yeah i look i'm excited to go through these rankings i don't know how much our our lists are going to match up but like i said it was very very difficult i I literally have a top 10 and it's actually a top 13 because I, I it's just <laughs> tough to to like not even just visualize those couple teams because even just trying to pick that 10th team is like so hard to split some of these teams out. So it's tough, bro. Yeah, it's tough. This is, I mean, this, this is hard. <laughs> yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to start at the bottom and go with number 10 first. So who do you have as the 10th best young core in the NBA with players 25 and below? It sounds crazy, but I have the Mavericks. Um, I got Luka Doncic basically at 10. That's that's the way I see it. Like, Luka Doncic at 10, because I feel like mm-hmm. Luka Doncic carries it. And that's why also they're so low, because you talked about depth at the young core. Right. Like, how many people are in your young core? I Like, Josh Green is a good player, but, like, realistically, I when I look at the Mavericks' young core, I just think Luka Doncic. So, mm-hmm. if there were, like, two or three more people up there, obviously they'd be way higher. Like, Luka's the best guy out of all on every team on this list, but mm-hmm. it's just, it's just not a lot of depth in that young core. Right. Um, so context, you know, key guys, 25 under there in Dallas, you got Luca, you got Jane Hardy, Josh green, Grant Williams, newly acquired. Um, he just barely makes the cut. Um, and then two rookies there and Derek lively and, and O max as well. Um, the Mavericks actually did not crack my top 10. Um, and again, a lot of that. that, yeah, a lot of that has to go to, like I said, that, that depth piece, like it is Luca and then a very, very big drop and again, it's cause Luca is probably the best player on this list, you know, entirely, mm-hmm. but, um, it doesn't feel as much of a young core as it's Luca and some, you know, quality pieces, like no shade to any of those other guys, especially I think Josh Green is, can be a really good player. We know what Grant Williams can be, and I really like the fit there in Dallas, but, um, you know, again, just based on some of the criteria and again, looking at potential, like it just, it can't, it can't make the, the top 10. I think they ended up finishing 12th. Um, so yeah, just outside of the, the top 10 for me, my number 10. And I really went back and forth a lot on this one. And it's the Cleveland Cavaliers, okay. um, which is really Darius Garland and Evan Mobley carrying the work there. Um, also, you have Isaac Okoro coming in under 25. Um, Jared Allen, who also is is 25, um, going to be touring 26 soon. So kind of makes the cut, yeah, barely. It barely um, made the cut. <laughs> and then uh, Amani Bates as well, uh, big, big drop there. But uh, it was really tough for me to pick between them and the Pacers. I wanted to be a little bit biased. Um, I really do like watching – Tyrese Halliburton play. I really like the fit with him and Obi Toppin, um, who also is coming in under 25. Uh, Benedict Matherin, who I think just has the the great, like the best mentality you could want for a young two guard in this league. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I was listening to, to Tyrese talk about it on, on Paul George's podcast, and he was just like, that crazy, irrational confidence, like, that's him. Like, he embodies that for real, yeah. um, which is exactly what you would want. Um, and you still have Andrew Nemhard, Jairus Walker, Ben Shepard, and so it's like, all that is great, but at the same time, that Garland-Mobley duo, both being so young, Mobley just coming off of a, a DPOY finalist year, his offense is only going to continue to get better um, going into to year three. Um, it was tough to to put the Pacers over them, and obviously Darius Garland being the the elite point guard he is, one of the best point guards in the league. Um, like, I just couldn't couldn't really justify putting the Pacers over them. So the, the Cavs come in at number ten on my list. Yeah, no, definitely makes sense. Definitely makes sense. Like a lot, a lot of these, this is a list you can't really go wrong. So makes yeah. sense for sure. Who do you have at the number nine spot? So in my number nine spot, and as I'm looking at it, I'm like, dang, they kind of low. But then I look at the people I have ahead of them, and then it just makes sense to me. I have the Portland Trailblazers. Okay. Um, I have the Trailblazers at nine just because I don't know how much you – I know you think Scoot is going to be a really good player. I think Scoot's, Scoot is going to be a superstar. Oh, that's yeah. Just, I'm that's on just, board with that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> all right. We're on the same page then because I think Scoot is going to be a superstar. I think he has, like, top ten player in the league potential. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? I just I just like the way he plays. Um, I like his competitive nature. I, I just like the I just like I just like everything about Scoot. You know what I mean? I think he has definitely has superstar potential. Um, Anthony Simon is over there. They have Shaden Sharp. Like you said, their depth is a little bit questionable because after that, it's kind of eh. But right. I just think I think Scoot if he reaches that full potential, I think that he's in that caliber of player to where like, all right, he's definitely one of those guys that like can is a franchise player basically that carries my young core and i mm-hmm. think that simons and shaden sharp are good enough to where like when i look at the young core as a whole i just like what they're building over there yeah now nah, i agree portland didn't crack my top 10 again they're like right on that fringe you know 11 12 13 they're all, all that kind of jumble that just didn't mm-hmm. make the top 10 um and a lot of that again comes down to the not even just the the depth there um, but again, the fall off, you know, you have Scoop, Shade, and Anthony Simons, and then you're looking at, you know, Nasir Little, um, their draft pick this year, and Chris Murray, Keon Johnson, you know, Jabari Walker, um, a lot of raw talent there. Um, and I think it would be different, like, if we recorded this in a couple of weeks and, and Dame got traded for a couple more young pieces, like, they probably are easily in the top 10 with the type of return they can get for Dame, or even if they get, you know, draft capital, like, come back when they consolidate some of that or have make some more of those draft picks. Um, so they have all of the pieces there to, you know, put together young core, but look, I'm fully on board with the Scoot Henderson train. I think he's going to be a franchise guy can be a superstar in this league. I think Anthony Simons is a like legitimate, you know, sc- scoring threat in this league and easily be a plus 25 point per game score. Shane Sharp, you know, as an explosive wing, he's going to be a great piece for them. Um, so I, I really like all of them. I say again, it just off the rip, like just trying to compare them to number 10, like they might be a little bit deeper, but I really am a big fan of Evan Mobley. I think he is going to be a perennial, like defensive, all defensive team guy, always going to be in DPOI conversations. Um, and we've already seen like offensive growth from him from year one to year two. So that's only going to continue to get better. Um, and he'll, I'm sure, reach a point where they probably get comfortable moving off of Jared Allen and, and Evan Mobley kind of becomes a full-time five there in Cleveland. Um, takes it even a bigger responsibility on the defensive end. Um, and as that offense continues to get better, like, he can really turn into a legitimate, like, consistent all-star. Um, and that duel between – really, if you get the trio, like, between him, Donovan, and DG, like, that's something to be, be reckoned with in the East for a lot of years. So – I just I couldn't I couldn't put um, Portland ahead of that, but I'm all all for Scoop as a like a generational franchise superstar. But who um who'd you have at nine? At nine, I had the Atlanta Hawks. Okay. Um. So again, twenty five and under. We're looking at guys like Trey Young, DeAndre Hunter, Sadiq Bay, Kobe Bufkin. AJ Griffin um, and Jalen Johnson. And I think 
obviously, look, Trey Young not making an all-star game this year, um, and putting up the stat lines that he did. Like, I think he's honestly started to become underrated, which is crazy to say. Mm-hmm. Um, but People I disrespect think, him a lot. Yeah, and, like, he's one of the worst, you know, perimeter defenders in the league. Like, all of that kind of criticism is warranted, but – at the same time, he's like a top, what, three at worst offensive engine in the NBA, like on par with guys like Luka and Jokic in terms of just like how much of his like of the team's offense goes through him. Mm-hmm. Um, so that alone is carrying a lot of the weight. I think DeAndre Hunter um, is a very, very quality wing player. I like the Sadiq Bay pickup for them to add in, you know, more shooting. Um, Jalen Johnson is a guy who I'm very excited to very excited to see what he does this year with John Collins now not being on the team. I think he has a really big opportunity to step up and showcase his skill set. Um, a really super athletic guy who can do a lot of things well on the court. I think that he can come in um, for this Hawks team and show a lot of people why. And I think that's part of the reason why they eventually. I mean, obviously they've been trying to move John Collins for so long, but. Um, he had to add some level of, of comfortability for them to, to move off of him. And hopefully he kind of slots into that role nicely. Um, and then AJ Griffin too, again, another good knockdown shooter, um, you know, coming out of Duke who had a, had a solid rookie season. Um, not sure how he's going to be able to find a ton of minutes. There is going to be kind of logged in that, you know, from that wing position with guys like Sadiq Bay and DeAndre Hunter. Um, but yeah, with, with Trey, and, you know, some of those guys I listed, I, I like what they have there in Atlanta. Um, again, just looking from a young perspective. Um, and again, now they're all going to have a full offseason there with, with Quinn Snyder to, to get right and make sure that they're all running stuff how he wants it to be operating. Um, so I'm excited for the Hawks this upcoming season. I don't know how much of a change it's going to make, but we'll see very quickly what, um, you know, how they look based on, having Quinn Snyder kind of jump in halfway last year and now having a full off season under their belt. Yeah. Copy. I had a, I had the Hawks at 11. Um, that one was tough for me because it was between the Hawks and the Mavs. So I was kind of going back and forth on which one I'd rather have in there. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, it just came down. Honestly, it really just came down to how high I see Luka Doncic. Like that's really all it is. Because yeah. That's the only case for having the Mavs over the Hawks. Cause you know, Trey Young is obviously an excellent player and they, have way more young pieces as far as like depth in that young core, mm-hmm. but the only factor that that made me pick the Mavs was just how good Luca is. Like Luca is just he's just a different caliber player in my opinion. So, yeah. but one hundred percent see why you have the 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 Hawks ahead of them. Mm-hmm. So, um, number eight, number eight, I actually have the Spurs. Um, okay, and I'm gonna be honest, I'm never gonna lie on this podcast. I didn't watch much of the Spurs because I don't really like watching tanking teams. I'm being completely honest with you. I don't like that's, watching tanking that's teams. That's fair. I really don't. So, um, you obviously, I think you know way more about the Spurs than I do. Um, but, obviously, I know about Women Yama. I definitely know a little bit about, uh, oh, my God, I'm forgetting his name. Jeremy Shohan. Jeremy Sohan. Mm-hmm. I definitely know a little bit about him. But, really, and we talked, we've seen the, the Bleacher Report one, how they, how highly they see the Spurs young core. Yeah. But it, it, really, I just feel like, Wimbyama is the one that carries it. You know what I mean? Because his potential is limitless. Like, he can... Matter of fact, time out real quick. I just want to ask you this question because I've seen a lot of people debate this. Mm-hmm. Do you, gen- Do you like, legitimately think he can become, like, the greatest player of all time? Or, like, top ten, top five NBA player ever? I feel like we've reached the age where it's, like, tough to be like, are we going to see someone surpass that? But... <laughs> right. At the same time, I feel like that's how we felt in football. Like watching Brady, it's like mm-hmm. we're watching the greatest quarterback ever. But then here comes Pat Mahomes, and it's like right, right there. <laughs> so you know what? I I don't know. That's just such an especially like he hasn't even played a, a single game yet. Uh, <laughs> so I don't I don't know if he can. If he can become the greatest player of all time, what I can say is he has the opportunity to change the way that the NBA looks. Mm -hmm. Like, if he can stay relatively injury-free, like, not perfect, but, like, 
relatively healthy, has a decently long career. That offense translates. It doesn't even have to be 100%, just a little bit with the elite defense. Like, we're going to look probably 15-plus years from now, and all of a sudden we're going to be watching AAU highlights of seven two dudes that play just like him. It's like That's seven scary. foot, seven <laughs> foot three point guards gonna start popping up across the world. Like, good luck making it to the NBA. You'd be in a six three guard now, <laughs> right? Um, it, so he has the opportunity, like, to really be something. He already is something that we've never seen before. But on an NBA stage, like, be a seven foot four, seven five guy, whatever his official height is, um, that can handle the ball, can stretch the floor, can finish, can rebound, can like can do really anything you ask of him on the the basketball court. So with that, I don't know if he can necessarily become the greatest. Like I feel like it's just we're way too early to even. That's why I said to, top to five. Yeah, greatest that. is tough. Greatest is yeah. hard. that's hard. That's a different level of conversation. But I, I do think he has the opportunity to really like all the unicorn hype that we've had for the last like decade or so with guys like Porzingis and Bull Bull or whatever, like year in, year out, they find the one skilled big man that can do all the extra stuff. He mm-hmm. can really be the one, not to no, not shade on Porzingis because I think he's obviously a great player, but like he, I think, can really be the one that like becomes the unicorn, you know? Yeah, I feel you. No, nah, I, I, def- I definitely 100% see what you're saying. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I just I just see people talk about it, like what is what do you genuinely think his like And I'm not saying it like that's just it's a lock. Like that's not easy at all. You know how hard it is to be who like who's getting kicked out of there? With Kobe, Tim Duncan, right. Chat like who's getting kicked out of there? So like it's not easy at all to do, but I just think with his with his um with his skill set, basically, and his system, and like mm-hmm. the team that he got drafted to, the organization that he got drafted to, the coach that he's gonna have, barring injury, and also the defensive impact that he's gonna have throughout his whole career, even if his offensive game takes a little bit of, of time to develop, his defensive impact is gonna be insane off the rip and pretty much throughout his whole career. So, right. I definitely think that could be his ceiling. So, and that's yeah. one of the reasons why, I mean, the like Bleacher Report has that young core so high, and that's why I have a number eight. Yeah, and when you even get to that high on on these all time lists, like a lot of that does factor in team success, like you said as well. Exactly. Like, you listen, guys like Kobe, Shaq, Tim Duncan, like you just listed all fourteen rings between the three of them. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of that is going to come down to if he stays in San Antonio for an extended period of time, like. Who's this coach going to be? Because it's not going to be pop forever. Um, you know, are they able to consistently put players around him to succeed? And like, we're looking like eight plus years down the line. Like, how right. many rings does he get? Is he able to, you know, consistent all star MVP? He's going to have to be MVP caliber type player. So, like, um, a lot of that will come down to factors that are outside of his control. Mm-hmm. Um, but if everything goes right, like, it's just it's so crazy to think like he really is going to be doing stuff that's like he has no business doing at that height like Mm -hmm. i almost want to be like could you imagine if you dropped him in like a nba game from like 1960 just like it wouldn't like like bro what (laughs) like i can't (laughs) even begin to fathom like what he would do out there and how people would look at him like they would genuinely like 100 percent think he's an alien like 100 think he's not human like seriously like they probably would like arrest him on spot and take him to like some (laughs) government facility or something did you see that clip of the the commentators going crazy when michael jordan did the behind the back bro i'm like bro (laughs) You gotta be kidding me, bro. I, I I get it, you know. The game has changed. The game has really changed. But it's just so funny to look back at that and see dude just did a behind the back and just like got it again with his right hand. Like instead of doing behind the back to the left. Like that's so simple. Like and the fact that like they're like, oh my God, what did Michael just do? Like, He's like a he wizard. just bro- <laughs> Yeah, like he just broke the game or something. That's funny to see, man. 
Yeah, his his ceiling is definitely the highest out of this entire draft class, and probably the highest we've seen since a LeBron prospect. Like, yeah. in terms of potential to for real be one of the greats. And again, at worst, he's at least gonna be. I think he'll be the unicorn, like the face of like unicorn. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, and so that was that was your number eight. Yeah. Okay, my number eight was, and this was close because I had the Spurs were kind of in consideration here, but I ended up bumping them up one spot at eight. I have the Minnesota Timberwolves. Okay. Um, so again, that's Ant, Jaden McDaniels, Nas Reed, and my guy Leonard Miller. Um, yeah, not the deepest core, um, and crazy as good as Nas Reed is, like he's gonna be like he's not gonna be a bench player, but like he very easily could be a high value starting center on a lot of NBA teams. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it's top heavy. Like Anthony Edwards is on a superstar trajectory. Like already has made the All Star game. Um, could become a face of the league. Like even with just his personality, like he has the the charisma for it. Um, but he is legitimately like, and I, I think almost an underrated defender. Like his defense is well talked about, but like. He not only has the, like the school the the skill set and the abilities, but he has the mindset. You know, like right. he in these biggest games of the season for Minnesota, like he's taken on a challenge to guard their best player on the other side of the ball. Mm-hmm. It's like, especially at the you know at, down the stretch there when Jaden McDaniels wanted to to end his season by punching a wall, hmm. um, like he stepped up on the defensive end and took the hardest perimeter assignment while also being their you know, their best offensive player. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that high, high level two-way ability from him um, is, I think, underrated at this point. I I think it doesn't get as as much credit as it deserves. Um, And if Jaden, well, not if, when Jaden McDaniels comes back healthy, you know, they bring in Leonard Miller um, for the first time as a rookie this year, like, this is a very solid young core. Like I said, if they were deeper, they would be a little bit higher. But again, just being really four players deep here um, is why I have them at eight. But Ant, Jaden, and Leonard Miller alone is crazy defense. Like, especially even just between Jaden and Leonard Miller, like you have guys that are switchable one through four easily mm-hmm. between the both of them. And then it's like when we talk about full roster, you funnel everything to Rudy. It's like, defensively y'all should y'all have y'all should be the number one defense in the nba y'all have the tools to be the number one defense in the nba so that that's why i have them eight um but you know i'm always put on for for leonard miller because that's gonna be my skill to draft so when (laughs) when it's 2027 and he's a a two-time all defensive team player we're gonna roll the clip from this year (laughs) where i say he was the steal of the draft yeah facts so so that was that was your eight. Um, my seven mm-hmm. is the Timberwolves. It okay. was, we just got them flipped, and I'm not. I'm just gonna let you go. I'm not gonna repeat everything you just said. No, yeah, because my you seven said is facts. my seven is the Spurs. So we literally okay. just have them have them flip flop. All right, but um, so. so yeah, for the same reasons, like Wemby is Wemby. Uh, <laughs> I think the combo between him and Sohan again both have the potential to be like consistently like top tier defenders obviously Wemby's going to be like in an otherworldly conversation in terms of defense but Sohan has the tools to also build out into you know all defensive team type of guy mm-hmm. um his offense came on a little bit better later in the year so we'll see how that develops going into year two um and then guys like Devin Vassell and Keldon Johnson if he does stay he's been you know rumors for a while now that they may move off of Keldon um but if they do keep him like you know I like Devin Vassell a lot as a two-way you know shooter um and his, his catch and shoot game was really good last year i'm excited to see him come back and play with Wemby. um and then obviously the youngest guys guys like malachi brandon and blake wesley um who have been you know hooping in summer league had high has some low i think brandon had the, the one for 17 game there that was crazy <laughs> the, the <laughs> that was crazy. 
Yeah, but uh, he was a bucket bucket for San Antonio last year, so um, he's got a lot of potential again. Still kind of raw for the both of them, but um, yeah, really. Wemby, Sohan, Devin Vassell, Kelton Johnson, like that is a very, very good young core. Obviously, Wemby being like having the craziest potential maybe out of anybody on this list. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's why I gave him the nod over Minnesota there. But again, not not the deepest, of course. I think all the teams that I have above them, like they've got the top end talent. But now we're also going like seven plus guys deep. Um, So we're almost there. So who is... Uh, right outside of your top five coming in at number six. So number six, I have the Pistons. Okay. And mm-hmm. I, I really like the young core. I really do. Obviously, you got Kay Cunningham. You got Jaden Ivey. But um, Asar Thompson, we just talked about him, like, has all the tools to be a great player in the NBA. All around, basically, on offense, on defense, everything. You still have Jalen Duran, who was showing some, like, offensive development in summer league like he was he took a three in summer league he didn't take a single three last year yeah which is crazy to see but you got him um you got isaiah stewart even if a guy like like james wiseman if he develops something then i mean i just like their core i like everything they got going on over there and it's it's deep you know i mean they have a lot of pieces they have a lot of players that go into that young core so Mm -hmm. um that along with like you said the situation now they have um well, sorry, I'm blanking on his name. Monty Williams. They got Monty Williams yeah. over there. So, like, they have an identity. So, all that included, I definitely got them at number six. Mm-hmm. And this is another one of those cases where I feel like if the age was a little bit younger, like if the cutoff was, like, 23 instead of 25, they would probably jump up into, like, borderline top three. Facts. Um, but, again, just because you got to include guys like, Shaw and Zion, not to get too far ahead, but it's like that makes it look a little bit more, a little bit more difficult um, mm-hmm. to put the Pistons higher. But I also have the Pistons at six, which is crazy. When I was doing the research for this, bro, do you know who else slots in under twenty five for the Pistons? Who? Cool. Marvin Bagley going into his seventh season is only twenty four. How does that even make sense? He's only t- what? He was born in March of 1999. He started his first year in Sacramento. He was 19. Okay. All right. That's, that, that just, that's just crazy to me. That's <laughs> right. crazy. Um, but, yeah, for a lot of the reasons that you said, like I'm super excited to see Cade Cunningham, Cade Cunningham back and healthy this year. Mm-hmm. Um, so he can actually get really a, a season or like with, with – um, Jalen Duran, mm-hmm. um, who is a part of a massive stack center room there in Detroit between him, Isaiah Store, who shout out to him, just got paid on a big time extension. Um, and then James Wiseman, too. So I don't know how they're going to figure all that out. It, for what my money's worth, I think Jalen Duran is the guy there. I think he has the, the most upside and just uh, right now is the best out of all of them on top of that exactly Um, i think he brings the most rim protection um you know the athleticism is there um lob threat you know aggressive roller like all the stuff that we talked about like what a lot of teams want out of their bigs now like how they're transitioning back to like we just want big men who can do four or five things very well you set screens roll defend the rim um, be able to, you know, attack on the inside. Like, he he does all of those things very well. He's only going to continue to get better and stronger. And even coming in last year as a rookie, like, his frame was really built out. Um, so, you know, pairing that, too, with, um, you know, Asar Thompson, like, again, if this list was a little bit younger, like, 23, uh, 23 under, they would easily probably be top. Like, three to four. Three, four, right there. Um but um, nonetheless, this is going to be one of like my league pass teams. Like easily, I'm going to be tuned into a lot of Detroit Pistons basketball this year um, because fast breaks with with Cade and Jaden Ivey, Asar and, and Jalen Duran. Like that just sounds like must see TV. Right. Um, so I'm going to be tuned into a lot of Pistons basketball. Like they're one of my favorite young cores. Like ranking aside like just like bias and like who i enjoy to watch like 
I'm going to like to watch a lot of the, the Pistons this year. Got you. Um, moving on now to the top five. Who do you have at number five on your list? All right. Um, at number five, I have the Orlando Magic. Okay. Mm. Now, this, now, this is tough. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to save it because I don't want to spoil who I got ahead of them. But yeah. I have the Orlando Magic. Um, obviously, with Paolo Bencaro, um being the leader over there, basically. Um, you got him, but I feel like they have the perfect combination of like good young players and a lot of good young players that go into the court, basically. So yep. I can definitely see an argument for them being higher, like 100%. Mm-hmm. But I got Paolo Bencaro over there. Um, you got Markel Folks who still fa- falls into that under twenty five. Right, same who, thing like Badly. Like, bro, how how are yeah, you still like, under twenty five? And so I say when I'm looking at it, if we're going off the criteria, he falls into there that he adds yeah. into that. So you got him. You got Wendell Carter. I like Anthony Black. Like the way he was playing the summer league. Like he was mm-hmm. playing amazing. So I like Anthony Black over there. And I didn't even mention any of the guys like Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs. Like like I said, they just have a lot of people that fit under that young core umbrella, basically. And if a guy like Jonathan Isaac could even get healthy, then it's like this, the future is looking scary. Like, the future is looking really, really good. So I got them at number five. Okay. I got them I got them a little bit higher than five. My <laughs> number five. And if I could have five and four just be a tie, I think that would be perfect. Because, like, really trying to separate these two teams. I just keep going back and forth in my head. And as I'm looking at it, I still feel like I want to flip them again. I flipped them like three different times as I made this list. Um, I think I'm going to just stick to my guns how I have it set up right here. So my number five is going to be the Memphis Grizzlies who have Joss, Desmond Bain, who just makes the cut. I think he just turned 25. Um, Triple J. We got David Roddy, Zaire Williams, um, Santi Aldama, Jake LaRavia, Josh Christopher, and, and the big boy Kenny Lofton Jr. <laughs> um, again, and I don't want to spoil it too much, but it, it was really like tough to separate them and the Pelicans, like similar ish type of thing where it's like you're able to slot in a guy like a superstar level player in Ja and then Zion for the Pelicans who like otherwise wouldn't make the list if this was cut down a little bit shorter um, in terms of age um, but also have got some really nice complimentary pieces there um, <clears throat> for both of those teams and looking at the Grizzlies like um, obviously Jaron being a reigning defensive player of the year I've liked what I saw from David Roddy last year and even this year in summer league um, Zaire Williams um, still has a lot of growing to do um, on the offensive side of the ball, Santi Aldama got the got a got the ratchet on him. Um, mm-hmm. So he he was a quality shooter for them, stretch big um, throughout the season. Um, I don't even gotta say nothing about Kenny Lofton, you know, no Kenny Lofton. <laughs> um, and then obviously Jake Laravia and Josh Christopher as well. So um, they've got it. Like I said, they've got the top end talent and their their core three guys who are like those are their core three guys like regardless of age like those are their their big big three um but like their top three guys on the grizz as a whole they just also all happen to be 25 and under so that's uh that's huge for them um and then they've, they've got the nice complimentary pieces there and i already mentioned some of those those younger guys as well so that's why i have the grizz is that i don't even want to say five it's like 4.5 it's like them and the <laughs> them and the pelicans are are so tight to try mm-hmm. to, to separate their I, I just got the Grizzlies hired just because of where they are right now you know what I mean yeah. like like you know Ja I've, I've talked about just compared to where I have the magic like I'd say Ja is the best player then you got literally the defensive player of the year and Jaron Jackson Jr then you got mm-hmm. Desmond Bain who's a 20 plus per, point per game score so it's like just for where they're at right now and them also still being young that's why I got them ahead so yeah um I got them at five, and then I think we both got the Pelicans at four. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I got yeah, the Pelicans yeah. at four. Talk a little bit about the Pelicans and why why you got them at four. Um. So I got the four just because, again, it's it's a little mixture of their potential and where they're at now. Because we've talked about it plenty of times. The fact that they were the number one seed before Zion went down. Like, mm. if Zion's healthy, they're a legitimate contender. 
So, yeah. I mean, like it's like I said, it's a combination between their potential and actually where they are now when they're actually fully healthy. Um, and they also have a lot, just a lot of people that go into that young core, basically. You got Zion. Um, you, got, you got Jose Alvarado. <laughs> yep, <laughs> you got yep. Dyson Daniels. Like, you got a lot of people that go into this young core, and they all contribute to a team that can win now when healthy, basically. So mm -hmm. um, that's the reason I got the Pelicans at four. Yeah, I think – what the only separator I have between those two teams, I think it's fair to say like job ja, Bain, triple J is like has better top end talent than what the, the Pelicans have here in this list. Completely mm -hmm. fair and agree there. Um, but when I look at some of those depth pieces, right? Like again, both of these teams relatively deep in terms of quality players under 25 and under, um, Dyson Daniels, I think, still has a lot of potential at being, see, like six seven. He's like, um, I thought he was like six eight. I could be wrong. I remember using uh, him on my team last year. Six <laughs> six seven or six eight. Oh, okay. um, but like, still, you know, shows those flashes in summer league of that elite quality, elite potential to be a really good playmaker um, and a really good defender as well. Um, so I, I'm projecting with his potential a little bit there as well. I'm a Big Jose Alvarado fan. I'm a big Herb Jones fan. I think he um, had a very, very good argument to make the all-defensive team this year. Mm -hmm. um, and so both of those guys, I think, factor in a lot as well. Um, Trey Murphy, too. Um, he was a really, really good player for them. Now, this year, he's only going to continue to get better um, on both sides of the ball. You know, good, really good shooter for them, um, but also has the – the, the tools to be a really good wing. So like defensively, this young core has got a lot, a lot of options there. Um, and then Jordan Hawkins, who has had a really good summer league as you know, was coming in into this draft as one of, if not the best shooters in this class. Um, and has shown that in summer league has a really nice shooting form. Um, and when he gets it going, he's able to like, really like set his feet and line it up. Um, he's knocking him down at a really, really high efficiency. So, um, I'm excited to see his rookie season there um, in New Orleans. We'll have a probably nice carved out role where he can get some spot minutes off the bench, um, be able to, to space the floor for them there. Um, and then obviously, like you said, Zion, just when he was healthy, we, you already know we posted the short with the reaction video. Like, yeah, man, they were the number one seed for a very brief portion there in the beginning of the year before he got hurt. And if he can stay healthy, this Pelicans team, man, they could really be a problem. Not even just in the like in the West, but like they should be a problem for the league in general. They could be legit um, contenders, like, right? Legitimately contenders. Like I said, they're all Zion is twenty four. Like he he still got a little bit to go till he hit his official like prime, starting like twenty seven, twenty eight. So it's like. It's nitpicking between those two teams, and like, I know it's tough to put Ja, Bain, and Triple J below that, but I mean, a little biased. Like, I'm a big Herb Jones fan. I have a lot of belief in Dyson Daniels' development. Um, and then Zion is just like, bro, he's just got to get healthy. Like, that's, that's get all healthy. it is. That's, bro, he, he's healthy. They're a contender easily. Yeah. Like, like that's why I say it's this like a perfect mix of like what they could be, what they could get to, and where they're at now if they just was healthy. Like to me, that's just the perfect mix right there. Yeah. Um. So that was that was your four, right? We both yep. had Pelicans at four. All right. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, what's your, what's your three? What do you have at three? My number three is the Orlando Magic, um, which you already hit on, but like. The, the list here, like these top three teams, the list is ridiculously long in mm -hmm. terms of talent that they have, 25 and under. You already listed them off, but you have Paolo and Franz and Wendell, like kind of solidifying that group. You bring in Anthony Black and Jet Howard as well, who if y'all have not watched any Jet Howard highlights from this summer league, you need to go tap into that. He was Barking in the last, I don't even remember who they played the other day, but he, I seen him hit like a little like tween step back three into my face. And it was like, it was one of the shots that like when it caches, like it cashed through the net so hard, the net like caught back on itself. I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh. Um, so he's a, he's a hooper as well. He's going to be a, a good addition to that core. Um, Cole Anthony and Jalen Suggs, who I don't know if they'll, 
both be there for too much longer. I feel like they've got to make something move between them two and Markel. Um, just you're going to end up with a log jam now that you've also brought in Anthony Black. But with all of them there, like it's a really, really uh, talented young guard room. Um, and then Jonathan Isaac as well, who it can't seem to stay healthy. But when he was healthy, um, was one of the better perimeter defenders in the, in the NBA. So um, – I almost don't think it gets talked about enough. Like, this man Paulo put up like we put up, like twenty point nine as a rookie. He um, had good rookie numbers, and like, yeah, like no one seems to care. <laughs> like, yeah, no one's up, talking about it. So uh, basically, like twenty seven and four. Obviously, the efficiency could be better, but like, he's a rookie. I'm not super pressed about that. Um, but like, just his feel for the game as a rookie, like his poise, his ability to like navigate through traffic with the ball um just to really be on the ball as much as he was like that was extremely impressive and again he's now what 21 not even he's still 20 it's like bro he's just scratching the surface um and so him and franz together like they could become the best wing duo in the nba in the next you know, we look three, four years down the line. Um, yeah. So with that potential, and I really like Jamal Mosley there. I think he's a really good um, development style coach at, you know, really, you know, bringing in talent and getting them up to speed. Um, so all of that is why I have the the Magic at three. Um, I have the Grizzlies at three. And everything you said about the Magic is right. Everything you said about the Magic is correct. I just think the Grizzlies top end talent is just a little, it's just better. That's the only reason why I have them. Yeah. Um, Cause you know, like I said, like I said, I said, think I said this before, Ja, he's right now the best player out of those two teams. Then you have defensive player of the year. Then you got Desmond Bain. So it's just, I just think the top end talent right there is just overall better. Um, I 100% think the match are deeper as far as the players in their young core. Mm -hmm. but I think the top end talent is for me is what put them over the top. So I'm not going to go too deep in on the Grizzlies because you touched on it already, but that's basically why I picked them at number three. And um, only two teams left. Yeah, we haven't um, listed either of them. So either <laughs> we, we wild snubbed them. Or... Right. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be. We would have to shut this podcast down if either of us don't have the same yeah. two teams. <laughs> and to me personally, I don't. The order to me doesn't really matter. Um, so, what is your number two? My number two is the Oklahoma City Thunder. Okay, okay, okay. All right. What do you you right. have? Do you have the Thunder at two? I have the Rockets at two. Oh, okay. <laughs> you got them flip flop. Right. Okay. Yeah. Why, yeah. Why, why do you have the Rockets at two? I have the Rockets at two. And when I tell you, this one was so hard right here. This one to me was so hard. And honestly, the only reason why I have the, the, the Thunder ahead of the Rockets is because the Thunder have the overall best player. Like, mm -hmm. that's it. Like, Shea, to me, I mean, not even to me. Like, he's obviously, is just the best player out of those two teams. Yeah. So, and he's first team all NBA. Like, he's easily the best player out of those two teams like superstar level already and i think um jalen green has potential to reach that i think amen times has potential to reach that i think like the rockets have players that are capable of reaching that level but i think the fact that shea is there right now and he's still so young like he can easily get better that's the reason why i have okc ahead of them but mm -hmm. um the rockets we talked about perfect mix between young players and like or as far as like the, the talent level of the young players and how many is on the roster. They have they almost have too many on the roster, bro. And they just like, consolidated and traded some of them away for like nothing. Yeah, and still just, are this deep. Bro, it's it's crazy. What you, Jalen Green, you got Shingoon, Tari Eason, Amen Thompson, Jabari Smith. Who am I missing? Who am I missing? I, and I know Cam I'm missing Whitmore, people. Kevin Cam Porter Whitmore. Cam Whitmore. Like, bro, like that's a lot of people. And it's like, I think I talk, I touched on this before. It's like, bro, you can't miss on all those guys. Somebody's going to be a superstar. <laughs> like, it's yeah. just it, it's just probability. Somebody's going to be a superstar. more than one. But the way Jabari Smith was just looking, the way Jabari Smith was looking, you got Jalen Green still there, the way Amen Thompson was looking just in his one game um, in summer league. It's like, bro, these they have, the potential is, is limitless, bro. The potential is insane. This is my rationale for why I put Houston ahead of, of the thunder 
So I was looking at it. I completely agree, right? Shea is the, like, if we're just looking at these two teams, Shea is outright the best player here. When I look at the Thunder, you have Shea, you have Chet, you have J-Dub, you got Giddy. Then to me, we hit a little bit of a, a little bit of a drop off, right? You get into guys like Trey Mann, Kaysen Wallace, uh, Jalen Williams, you know, mm-hmm. J-A-Y, and then Usman Jang. When I look at this Rockets core, like you listed it right, Jalen Green, Jabari, Amen Thompson, Cam Whitmore, uh, Tari Eason, Alperin Shangun, Kevin Porter Jr. Not only are all of these guys young and can continue to develop, like all of them have shown me something like already. Like Usman is still pretty raw. Kaysen Wallace, um, you know, he's had a really good summer league. Jalen Williams has had, you know, was able to play for them a good bit. But like when I think about like Alperin Shangun is probably third, fourth best player here. And it's like, I think Alperin Shangun can for real like become a Sabonis level type player in terms of like mm-hmm. his ability to play make as a big man. And supposedly he's getting taller. I can't, I need to see these official measurements. Bro, that out. Yeah. Rockets Twitter have me believing he about to come in the year being seven, three. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but apparently he's, he was on some like Turkish podcast or something. And he basically said he grew like X amount of centimeters, but it was like almost an inch taller. Um, and so he like almost might be a legit seven footer. Um, but it's like, I'm thinking of it. Okay. It's like, you got Jalen green, right? You've got Amen Thompson, you got Jabari. And so you have Al Perrin. It's like, if we're getting this deep and I'm still thinking like, bro, some of these guys can like, to me, like watching them have the potential to reach those levels, that, that depth and that potential, like that deep to me mm-hmm. is why I put them ahead of OKC. Cause like I said, like Shea, Chet, J Dub, Giddy, off rip, like all of them proven in the NBA. All of them have tons of potential. Um, but it's like, bro, I just I can't imagine a world right now where it's like, bro, Cam Whitmore is gonna be what? He's not even gonna start for this team. Nah. It's like that is crazy. Like, honestly, you put together this young core in a starting lineup. Cam Whitmore might not even start for the young core here. Like, for real. <laughs> that's crazy. Like, y'all are that deep with talent. Uh, so it's like, when you got to nitpick that, you know, that close between these two teams, that's why I ultimately ended up putting the Rockets ahead um, of the Thunder here. But, bro, this, like, both of these young cores, like, I, I feel like, have we ever seen this much young talent on a team? Like, in the NBA as a whole is one thing, but it feels like, bro, both of these teams, like, y'all have so, like, you see, this is almost your whole roster. Yeah, like, basically. For the Rockets, it's like, outside of this, it's just like, okay, we have Fred. Freddie, Dylan. Dylan Brooks, Jeff Green. Right, not really going to play. So it's like, you, right. you, <laughs> it's like, you really just add Fred and Dylan. It's like, that's right. the whole Rockets roster. For the Thunder, like, this is most of the key players that like you're adding in, like, Jeremiah Robinson Earl and Cambridge Williams, right? And it's like these are the guys. Like your mm-hmm. your team team is also the your young core. core. Yeah, like, facts. <laughs> that is crazy. Facts. Um, no, nah, I I listen. You're not gonna get an argument out of me, bro. Like, like I said, it was back and forth. It it was nitpicking. Like that was the only, Shea was literally the only reason why I put them over them because, like you said, the Rockets are just so deep and. Pretty much all of them have potential to reach like minimum like all star level players basically. So it was insane. Honestly, it was insane. And actually, now that I look at it too, OKC and the Rockets are actually two and three. The number one is the Lakers with Austin Yo. Reeves, <laughs> Rui Hachimura. I just feel like the superstar potential over there. Max Christie. Max Christie. Like, and LeBron is still young. He's only twenty three. <laughs> like the superstar <laughs> potential is just crazy over here. So you know that's my that's my own number one. So we about to end the in. episode right here. <laughs> but now uh, yeah, these, these these top two teams, man. I said I already said like I'm watching these two teams heavily, like for years and years and years to come. So if you're a fan base of these two teams, you have a very very bright future. 
You know what I just popped into my head that I can't wait for? Hmm. When they have, let me pull up the the, the groupings. When they have the in season tournament, right? And you have, I'm sure we'll see some of these teams like your Lakers or the Clippers probably sit some of their guys um, or maybe not take it as seriously. These teams, like the Rockets and the Thunder, like they they probably gonna hoop all their guys and they're gonna be like, what do they have to like to not play for? Like they're not gonna take real. it probably more seriously than any of the other teams in the league. Yeah. And so I feel like, because like, let me see, they might be in the same group. Oh no. Okay. The Thunder are in a group. Oh my gosh, this group is nasty. It's, the Thunder are in a group with the Kings, the Warriors, the Timberwolves, and the Spurs. And the Rockets are in a group with the Nuggets, the Clippers, the Pelicans, and the Mavericks. So it's like, will both of those teams, like, come time for those whatever Tuesdays and Thursdays tournament days like they're probably going to mess around and steal a couple of games that they otherwise would have no business stealing just cuz it's like they're on a they're on a bigger stage i don't know if they've set out like national tv stuff but like might be a national televised game um it's like you're going to get to just go at it and play for something a little bit more meaningful than just a regular season game in November. Um, and I feel like that's the perfect time for these young cores to just go out and hoop against other teams that may not care as much or may just be sleeping on them. So I'm really excited to see how these younger teams uh, impact the in-season tournament, how they approach it, because it's going to be a good run for them regardless. And, like, they have nothing to, you know, low manage or, you know, mm-hmm. be super concerned about the playoffs because that's, like, years down the line for them. Right. Um, so I, th- I think – what's the name? I think uh, I think the winner of the in-season tournament is either going to be, like, a first seed who's just, like, killing everybody. Like, they're just playing well. Like, I don't think they're going to, like – like, like say the in-season tournament was last year, like a team like the Nuggets, who was like the first seed pretty much majority of the year. Like, yeah. I don't think they're genuinely going to be like, let's try to win it. But like, they're just going to be so good that they're just going to win it off just, you know, being better than everybody. But yeah. it's either going to be a team like that or it's going to be, like you said, a young team that's just, we're going hard. Like, I don't see, you know, like the Lakers, like I don't see at this point, like the Lakers really trying to like win that, like. A, a team like the Lakers will probably rest LeBron and AD not caring about no in-season tour, like right. not caring. So an older team like that can definitely get, like, beat by a younger team who's just out there hungry just trying to play. Well, shoot, they look, it is worth if you make it to the semifinals, you get a free trip to Vegas in the middle of the, the regular season when otherwise right. you might be traveling to, I don't know, Milwaukee and it's snowing. Nah, in fact, yeah, <laughs> All of a sudden you get, to, you get to be in Vegas. I'm not. They, them young teams definitely gonna play hard now. And some and of these dudes, it, they can't even do nothing in Vegas. They, <laughs> <laughs> right. And and you get a little cash prize. Like these guys on a rookie deal. So I mean, they might actually really want that little cash prize. Who knows? All right. Look, yeah. I, now that I'm really thinking about it, like we might mess around, and see one of these young teams come out of nowhere and win the end season tournament. I'm for um, it. I, yeah, I'm all for it because they at least are gonna have to hoop. Like, it's, it, it, at least when you get to, like, the semifinal round, like, I'd imagine if you've made it that far, like, you're going to play your guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I, I'm, 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 I'm just excited for the the fact that the NBA is, like, trying something different. Um, and, like, trying to, like, spice up what's typically, like, the drier part of the season. Like, before Christmas, like, we're kind of outside of, you know, we're weeks removed from, or a month removed from opening day and opening week, like. They're adding something to to keep it fresh, so I like that. Uh, Before we move on to what we we have planned to wrap up the episode, let's both go through and list out our top five. So who do you have um, top five young cores in the NBA? My top five young core in the NBA, 25 and under, are five, I have the Magic, four, I have the Pelicans, three, I have the Grizzlies, two, I have the Rockets, one, I have OKC. Okay. And so my five, at five, I have the Grizzlies, Four, I have the Pelicans. Three, I have the Orlando Magic. Two, I have the Oklahoma City Thunder. In my top spot, number one, I have the Houston Rockets. League is in good hands, bro. The league is in great hands. 100%. Um, To wrap up today's episode, we're going to do something different. 
we are going to be doing a draft, but not a normal draft. <laughs> um, quarterback just came out on Netflix, and I'm addicted again. <laughs> um, and I can't wait for football season now. And so with that in mind, we are going to do a draft based on NBA players to make a seven-on-seven seven football team. So one quarterback, you said four receivers, one running back, one tight end. Yes, sir. And so I'm going to give you the first pick. You could go any direction. I say we just keep it to current players because yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want nobody drafting a new bowl. <laughs> right. <eight> wide receiver. <laughs> All um, right. Who you give me the first pick? You know what? And we'll do it like a snake draft. So I I get the first pick, and then you'll get two back to back. Two let's back do it to that back. Way. Okay. Let's make it. Let's make it a little bit more fair. So mm-hmm. my quarterback, I'm going Jokic. Like okay, on, that's what I was. Out there. I was thinking. Okay, he's gonna be out there dying people up, bro. That that was an easy pick for me. Okay. With my first pick, let me think. I'll back you can pick back. any position. Like you don't gotta pick a QB first. I know. Yeah, it could be any position. It's crazy because like I almost you think like pastors like I could put I could put LeBron, but it's like bro, Bron probably could play tight end. Like, tight end so and be cr- a dominant think. tight end. Uh, you know they had him in the flag football game. He said he could have played in the NFL as a tight end. I mean, I'm not gonna lie, he's like six eight, like run super fast. I if he tried to, I think he probably could. Yeah. Um, let me think. Let me think. You can't scramble in seven on seven, right? You get one run. Like that's how seven on seven is. You get one blitz, one run. Like that's okay. how the, yeah. that's how like the top seven on seven leagues look like yeah. play it. That's the lineman in me talking. I don't know how this works. <laughs> um, dang, I was about to pick Jock. We were about, <laughs> we about to scramble every play. <laughs> um, okay. My first pick, I'm gonna go. Dang, I'm trying to think of who I really want to be my quarterback. I might save quarterback for later. Well, my first pick, I'm going to take me somebody speedy. You know what? I'm going to pick Ja and have him play running back. Okay. So he okay. can hit the little, little, give him a little table route out the right. backfield. Right. Facts. A little, a little option routes, right. the wheels. Okay. Okay. I like hey, that. Right. Like he got that. the short, compact frame, get a little shifty. Okay. I like that. And okay. then my next pick. I'm going to take yeah, – I think I'm going to go for a, a big receiver. <laughs> I'm going to go – who really is, like, lanky and moving like that? Um. Oh, I got to go one. I feel like I'll probably hold this one. I'm going to just do it now. I'm going to take Kyrie. And draft him as a receiver. He gonna be okay. in my, he gonna be in my in the slot. slot. Okay, I like that. All right, I, I like that. Right, I like that, that ball handling about to translate. <laughs> he could be mad shifty. Okay, I yeah. like that. So you got Kyrie in the slot. I, right. I got two picks back to back. I need a receiver. I could save running back for later. I'm not. I'm really not worried about running back. And I already know who my running back is in my head too. If I'm going receiver, I I, I need somebody who's big. I feel like I need a tall guy, and then I need, like, a tough possession-type receiver. So, my mm. possession receiver, I'm going to go Jimmy Butler. Mm, That's I like that. Do. Okay, okay. He's a, little, he's a little scrappy. You know what I'm saying? He's going to run my digs, run my curls. You know, the little stuff, the slants. He's going to take the hits off the middle. So, that's going to be that. And then my tall receiver. Ooh, this is tough. This is tough. This is tough. I'm going to go... I'm I'm gonna go Giannis. I'm gonna go Giannis. Ooh, the ju- the jump. Listen, the goal balls is up. Giannis is coming down with those. I'm sorry, he's yeah. got to come down with it. So, I'm gonna go Giannis. Okay, okay. I definitely need to get some size. Let me get some size. So my I got two back to back picks. <clears throat> well, my first one. Talking about jump balls. I'm gonna take Zion for my tight end. Oh, I forgot. Okay, now nah, that was a great pick. I'm oh my Zion god, that's a great pick. Big body could cut him over the middle. We just gonna chop his knees down, bro. Like he's yeah, gonna, <laughs> he's gonna be out. He's gonna chop his knees. Um, 
And then I need a I need a big receiver. I need a big receiver, but somebody that's mobile. Um let me think. Let me think. Who would be a nasty receiver? Like, I need, I, I need like a, I need like Mike Williams. I need like a jump ball yeah, receiver. Right. <laughs> and I like, I'm trying to think of somebody that's also not like sluggish. Like, I, I was like, and be like, be too slow. Yeah, he he gonna be mad slow. You need people that can move. Um, let me think. Who could I put out there? I need somebody that's like dummy athletic. Like, oh, matter of fact, I might just changed. Dummy athletic just, and tall. Okay, I might have just changed my my running back and my. I right, I think I, I think I got this planned out. Hey, this is low key a little hard. <laughs> just just low key because you gotta think like what players like abilities would translate okay okay i'm torn between two people okay i think i'm gonna go only because he's older i'm not gonna take him i'm gonna take triple j jaron jackson jr okay put him as one of my white outs that's your x receiver yeah i know he got the bounce so we ever need to Whoever need the quick nines, that's <laughs> who we throwing it up to. You get another pick too. You got back to back again. I had, I took a Zion. Oh, you right, you right, you right. Yeah. All right, bad, bad, bad. So, all right. So I got Jokic. I got Jimmy. I got Giannis. So I got my two outside guys. I need my slots. I need a tight end. I need a running back. So one of my slots for sure. Shifty, fast. I'm taking Tyreek's Maxi. Oh, yeah. that's a good one. That's a he, good one. He's gonna be my slot receiver, and my running back. Mm, my running back. I'm gonna take Russell Westbrook. I know he's a little bit older. Nah, but that's, a good, that's a good pick. That's a good yeah, pick. Yeah, I, I gotta take Russ. He got the energy. I need to take Russell Westbrook. He got that dog in him. They might be playing flag or touch. You gonna truck somebody? <laughs> okay, I got two picks. I got. You got two receivers and you got a quarterback left. Okay, okay. You want to um, know? You know your team. You want me to read it out? Yeah, I got Jaron. I got Kyrie in the slot. Kyrie in the slot. You got Jaws running back. Zion is tight end. Okay, okay. So two receivers. I might just say the quarterback for last. So let me think. So I could get another shifty receiver and then another tall dude. My bad. I'm thinking. I just found my tight end. Oh my god! I yeah. just found my tight end. <laughs> Better not take Kenny Lofton. <laughs> nah, I'm just, <laughs> we just doing straight run plays. He blocking. That's all I need for him. <laughs> um, let me think. Let me think. I'm really just like, who the most athletic NBA player? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to write my tight end down now so I don't forget. Oh. You know who I'm taking as a receiver? Who? Anthony Edwards. That's a great pull. Oh my God, that's a good Anthony pull. Anthony Edwards. And he had I know he played Madden. So mm -hmm. I know that's he a, got it. He, he got it locked in. That's a top tier pull. That's a good pull right there. Six four with like a forty plus inch vert. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I nah, like that. It. So we got that's the, a we top got tier the super pull. jump ball over there with with Triple J. We got Kyrie for the shifty breakdown, shallow uh, slot routes. Mm -hmm. Now we got Ant. I need mm. one more. One more receiver. Hmm. Let me think. Let me Who's think. my other receiver going to be? I had somebody in my head, but I forgot him. Dang. Should I go with another, like, super athletic dude, or do I... Go for like a second slot guy. That's bro. That's what I'm trying to think too. So I got my tight end on pack. I mean, you got Triple J. He mad tall. You got yeah. Ant. You can go like big and have Ant play the slot, be a big slot. We can have Ant on the outside and go a shifty dude. Like you can go mad different directions. 
Dang. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go. I think I'm just going to pick. I'm going to pick my quarterback last in the next round. So I'm going to go and get another receiver. And I'm going to take. <sighs> Bro, I've, I've been thinking about this this whole time. And I was thinking about drafting him earlier, and I don't know if I was going to do it, but I think I'm just going to pick it because I can't. He keeps showing up every time I'm thinking about <laughs> it. I'm going to take KD. Okay, I, I was thinking him too was one of my first receivers, but I'm like, he's so lanky. He I is. don't know. Yeah, but, but you know, I like it. I like it. I seen him play in that flag game against LeBron back in the day, and he, he was, was working. He was working. So I'm going to take KD. He was he was definitely hooping. Um, I only got one more pick, and I need a. Res- Oh no, no no sorry no 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 I put in I put in my tight end I forgot all right so my tight end I'm picking Aaron Gordon I I just was thinking about picking him for my receiver slot bro I just feel nah, like he perfect. fits perfect for a yeah. tight because he's big but he's still athletic but he's still Jump fast ball, yeah bro it's a perfect tight end bro that's my that's my Travis Kelsey right there that's my George Kittle so then boom I just need one more receiver now look I got. Where my team at? Where my team at? I got Jimmy, I got Giannis, and I got Maxi. So I got two. I got my outside guys already locked down. I just need another mm. slot. So do I go with a super fast guy? Ooh, this is tough. You know what? Give me De'Aaron Fox as my other slot receiver. Ooh. Mad fat. Yo, my slots is crazy. Yeah. Off the Tyrese line. Tyrese and De'Aaron is crazy. <laughs> yeah, right, just mad. Crazy. Mm. Straight slant, straight, z- yeah. straight uh, uh, zig routes, straight, oh my God, option routes. Nah, it's getting nasty, bro. It's getting nasty. So, my, as a matter of fact, I'll let you pick first and we're going to go over the teams. I'm going to wrap it up. So, I'm going to take, I saved my quarterback for last. If we did this draft maybe five years ago, I would have picked this guy at, at a skill position, but since it's seven on, I mean, you don't got to move too much. I just need him to make the right reads. Give me the GOAT LeBron at my <laughs> QB. It's not going to be a better decision maker on the field. And mm-hmm. He's going to be putting them passes on the money. Listen, yeah, that was, you can't go wrong with that pick. You can't go wrong. So you, I'll let you name your team that I'll name mine. So I got LeBron at QB. John Morant at running back, Zion Williamson at tight end, and then I got on the outside, I got Anthony Edwards and Jaron Jackson Jr., and then in the slot, I got Kyrie, and I'm missing one person. Who am I missing? It cut out. What'd you say? What for your slot, guys? I got Kyrie in one slot, and then who I got in my last receiver? KD. You got Ant. Oh, my god. So you got KD on the outside, you got Ant in the, on the slot. Okay, so Le- yeah. LeBron at Q, Ja at running back, Zion at tight end, KD and Jaron Jackson Jr. outside receivers, and on the inside, I got Kyrie and Anthony Edwards. Yeah, I like that. I like that. That's a good team. That's a really good team. I'm not going to lie. So, look, I got QB. I got Jokic on the outsides. I got Giannis and Jimmy Butler. My slot guys, I got Maxi and De'Aaron Fox. My running back is Russell Westbrook, and my tight end is Aaron Gordon. Ooh. 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 I don't know. This no, this one's close. Y'all, y'all gotta let us know who, who Yeah, y'all gotta seven seven. let us know who you think is better. This one unbiased. This is a toss up, bro. Yeah, know. it really is. This might be like, our closest draft. Yeah, nah, because it's, is, the, it's the most obscure one. <laughs> right. Facts. I don't think there's I don't think there's either one that's like gonna kill the other one. Like yeah. uh uh-uh. And I'm this letting y'all know now if y'all see somebody else draft a seven on seven team. <laughs> With NBA players, I ain't seen nobody do it. We nah, started it. it. Facts. Yeah, this is hard. This that was fun. Yeah, yeah. That was definitely fun. We got to, we got to put them in Madden. <laughs> Might have to. <laughs> that game is so bad, bro. <laughs> turn this the whole turn, do another thirty more minutes on how bad oh. Madden is. <laughs> yeah, bro. Like the clips has been coming out with the the Mahomes animation of the dude diving and. Throwing it 60 yards, about to hit the ground. It's like, bro. I'm never buying that game again. Bro. I already know it's going to get exploited. Like, every year is just exploits. I've always said it's crazy that, like, sports video games have metas. Like, yeah. 
What? <laughs> like it does. That should not be a thing, bro. That junk is so stupid. That's Could you imagine if in the real life they was like, now nah, we had to trade this dude, bro. He was too off meta, bro. <laughs> he was too off meta, bro. He didn't fit with the meta. Like, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't fit with the meta. You gotta wait for the next year new patch. Like, bro, come on, bro. That's they crazy. gotta get it right, cause bro, all of them are mid now, bro. Even all FIFA, even FIFA is going down. I've heard like all them games suck, bro. Every last one of them, all them games suck. There's no point in even wasting your money. You need to bring NBA Live back. Facts. Last well, NBA Live was bad too, though. I don't know. It might just be a wrap for sports. <laughs> sports games as a whole just might need to retire the whole genre. <laughs> you gonna get two K twenty four? I don't know, bro. I re- I genuinely don't know. I might get it just like, cause that worst case, we could play some play now. Not play now. Uh, was it team up? Team up, yeah. We'll play some team up and go crazy. It happens but. every year. I like. I say I'm not gonna get it. I don't get it for months, and then it's like middle of the NBA season. I'm watching basketball every day, and it's like, dang, I really want to play some 2K. And I buy it when it's on like it's like a twenty dollar sale, mm-hmm. and I play play now online for a couple months, and I'm like. Ah, his game is like still garbage, <laughs> but it but it scratches the itch. <laughs> right. No, I'm, I'll, I'll probably get it when it's on that little sale, bro. That's it. I seen a clip today. They put out my team. I think it's like the End Game series or whatever. It's like mm-hmm. they've been putting yeah, out ninety nine. They've been putting out ninety nines mm-hmm. for months, but it's like the the stupid <clears throat> busted ninety nines that got like ninety nine ball control and all the best animations, like, all the best jump shots. badges. Yeah, bro. Dudes was doing the spin back fadeaway three with Shaq from half court. Bro, listen. What, it's was, not even basketball at this point, bro. When I was into my team last year, bro, and when I used to run up against that stuff, I was like, yeah, this game is done. Like, this is, this is how I know the game's over. Bro. Like, bro, it's so cool. It's done. It's his raps. Because then that's when they dropped the, the Shaqs that could play point guard. They get dropped it. Now they had Wimby that can play point guard. You got a seven right. five guy that's playing my shooting guard. Like what is Why this? Why did they even put in the thing where it's like you couldn't put every like you, cars can only play certain positions and it's like cool, like we'll get rid of dudes running lineups with five mm-hmm. centers and then they make center cards that could play point guard. Like, bro, yeah, just defeated the whole purpose. The only thing that makes it good is the fact that in the beginning of the year, like, it just gives it a little bit more longevity. Like, in the beginning of the year, it'll be legitimate. Like, you see, like, Chris Paul, Curry. Like, you really see point guards. Once it hits, like, middle of the the, the, the cycle, raps. Rap. They, they they start off light. They drop, like, a K Cunningham, who's legitimately a point guard, but, you know, he like, 6'8". Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? They try to, like, ease you into it. Yeah. Once they drop Shaq, raps. <laughs> it's over. The last 2K my team I played seriously, I think was 21. And I remember I got matched up into a game, and it was like, I think the dude had like, he might have had like Paul George at the one. And then no lie, bro. Like, you know, you their old screen, like we used to do the lineups, it would show you their whole team. But I jumped, mm-hmm. was like, Paul George, small forward, center, all the way down. <laughs> it was literally like, oh, it was at least yeah, like a uh, 99 pink diamond or whatever the top tier mm-hmm. is. Galaxy Oval. Galaxy Oval, yeah. Right. Every single one of them busted center cars that could dribble and shoot, like David Robinson, Shaq, Hakeem, mm. like to- like seven foot six, bowl, bowl. Taco, bowl, bowl, right? All them Taco all fall, cars, yeah, bro. But they curry sliding around the court, like moving like guards. But I ain't gonna lie, last year I had some of them guards. I like you, if it, you want to play, you have to play with them. Like you what? can't not. I say I just saved up because like every year they have a crash to where like you can get like bro I bought like an end game Kobe for like ten thousand MT which is like nothing like bro once it crashes and everyone has them the game's over bro <laughs> like it's just wraps you're gonna face the same lineups and it's just disgusting right and bro at that point what be getting me sick is like obviously I don't be I'm not grinding the team that well so I'd be pulling up with like I got a couple. Diamonds still, like, mm-hmm. you know. There's a regular I, team. Bro, I got a couple pink diamonds. Like, I'm not about to sit up here and grind this game like that. I'm running into these dudes that got full 99, Galaxy Opal, all the cheese cards. It's like, bro, I'm, I'm watching y'all on the sticks. Y'all are so bad. Oh, no, they the don't be game. good at all. They like, be terrible. Awful. But just be shoot, like, just shoot anything. And it goes in just like you got a 99-3 and you're seven foot four. Uncontestable. Like, this bro is <laughs> gross, bro. This junk is so nasty. Nasty. And then the dudes be having the wildest takeovers. Like, dude hit, like, three shots. 
and all of a sudden, why David Robinson got a playmaking takeover again, <laughs> ankle breaker. I'm like, bro, this is so, this is so dumb, bro. What are we, what are we doing here, bro? Yo, can't wait to have, can't wait to do it all over again. <laughs> Every year, bro. We need to get, look, we just need to get back into pro am. That's Low it. Key. Low key. Uh, I will be down. The big man resurgence will come back. The glass cleaner. I'll Low hold key. it down. <laughs> I gotta get back in my bag, man. Well, I played a rec game for the first time in like a year the other day on my sixty-four overall. It was like, like like a glass cleaning athletic finisher or something like that. We won. Had me about four point six rebound, you know, contributing. <laughs> Ain't doing not a damn thing out there. Cardio, straight cardio. <laughs> Can't hit a shot, can't be left wide open, can't do nothing. That's the other thing, too, bro. Why do people quit out rec games and then, like, it's it's like a 5v1. Like, it's one dude left on the other team. He down He's by, not like, quitting. 30. Why are you not quitting the game, bro? He's not quitting, bro. He's going to stay till the end of the game, bro. Or, or he'll stay all the way into, like, a minute left in the fourth quarter and then quit. Right, and... You did all that at that point. You're not gonna get none of the VC. You're not getting no none, of that, XP, none of the badge points. Nothing. nothing. Just wasted everybody in this lobby's time, including your own. I've been, bro, I've been, I've been playing play now where like you being somebody and it's like they don't want to quit and so they start using up their timeouts. They use yeah, up the use up, the, use up the pause happens. timer, like pause the game, literally mm-hmm. letting it to like five seconds and then unpause it, like. Just wasting time for what? Like, Child like you don't got nothing. Bro. You don't got nothing better to do, bro. You don't got nothing better to do. So childish. Yeah, two K is cooked. Madden is cooked. FIFA is cooked. Call of Duty is cooked. Gaming is cooked. Gaming everybody got to go outside and touch grass. That's what everybody got to do. Everybody yeah. got to go outside, bro. Unfortunately, it's a shame, bro. It's a shame. I don't know, and I really don't think NBA Live coming back could save it because the last NBA Live was really, really horrible. I watched, I think Kenny did a, vi- a video recently going back to, I think it was Live 19, and I was like, even the graphics in there was like, oh, y'all are like so far behind 2K, it's crazy. Bro, they're cooked, bro. They're absolutely cooked. Even if they make a good game, nobody going to play it because it's live. They would literally need to put it out like free to play. They should. I would, bro, if it's, bro, they could put out, I don't care who, it could be the most random company. If they put out an NBA game free, you get I'm a playing. download out of me. That's what I'm saying. That's all you at need. At least try it. You need to let, you need to get your foot in the door, bro. You got to let people just at least try it. And it. But make it good, though. Like, make it, like, OD, but it, but make it free to where right. people would just play it. And they'd be like, oh, this is actually good. And then people actually start playing it. Which, <laughs> which game do you think is worse as of, like, the last... Like four or five years, like Madden or Two K, they both bad. But like, which one do you think is really worse? Madden is unplayable. Like that's the problem. Like Madden is, damn, Madden yeah. is legit. <laughs> yeah, drop old bike. Madden is legitimately like you cannot play the game unless you know the exploits. You got this card and do it. Like Two K, like you, there's modes you can play. Like there's stuff you can do. Like Madden right. is just if this dude knows this freaking what's it called the Nano Blitz. If he knows this. It, like you're done, bro. You can't. You can't even. You just gave me PTSD, the game. bro. <laughs> like the fact was it Madden uh twenty one or twenty two? Everybody was running, um, everybody was running like three three five wide, where it has like the two outside linebackers. You could walk both of them up on the ball, and it put on QB contain, and it would glitch out your tackle to where he would never go and block, dude. It just was like, bro, this. Like you just said, 2K got playable modes online. Like playing out online is you could you could get away with playing that mm-hmm. all the way up into like the top tiers. Um, park is for cat like you be casual in the park a lot of the time unless you run into right. your sweats. But like and even the, 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 the single play. player modes is decent. Like it, mm-hmm. people that probably for real like tweak the settings up so we're like you get some type of difficulty playing like advanced Hall of Fame whatever. You're like running through franchises, franchise mode and Madden don't even work. <laughs> Like, bro, last year it was people that lost their save files, and EA just was like, dang, I'm sorry. 
They don't care. <laughs> like, dude, dude, dudes are spending hours on the game. They in like year twenty of a, a franchise. <laughs> he just said, "Nah, bro, it's gone. My fault." I miss the days where Ultimate Team was like OD, bro. Like Ultimate Team. My Ultimate Team used to be wave, bro. Whatever year had when they had like Michael Vick at running back, like that Christmas card. OD, OD. That joint was too fun. Like mm. now, I'm I'm good. I don't even want to touch it. I'm straight. I really thought abilities would be like. I'd be like, oh, this would be a cool, nice little add to Madden. Nah, ruin the game. It sound bro. good. It sound good if you do it right, but they didn't do it right. Ruin the game because everybody want to run the same ones. Everybody want to put Bazooka on so they could throw it 90 million yards from the parking lot to the end zone. <laughs> everybody want to put on, was it Dashing Deadeye so I could scramble for 50 million years and just throw the ball on a run, perfect <laughs> accuracy. Like, it, it, like <laughs> everything they added to the game makes it less and less like football. It's It's like... That's what I said. It's unplayable. Like, it's not football at that point. It's literally unplayable. Yeah, and the, uh, the play now online modes, like, you can, like I said, you can get away playing through play now 2K. You play however you want. You can beat people. If you start running into decent people in Madden, it's because they have a, they have they little, they watch the ebook or whatever, right? They know the glitch plays. They run in whatever the, the comp defense is. They know. All the little tricks, best routes, how to dumb out your coverage so your safety in cover three just walks to the middle of the field instead of covering his deep third. It's just like, exploiting the game. Like you, They just know the way to make the game glitch. Like right. That's all it is. Like Bro, You're not good. The, one of the last Madden games I ever played, like Pharrell made me delete it off my system. Bro, I was playing against a dude, and I was beating him, and he started – he would go on offense – and he would flip his play like four times in a row until like a does not make any sense. My corner, I'm in zone. My corners would start like following, oh. so like he could he could quick hype me, and I would have nobody covering the outside of fields. So he could just put flats out, quick outs, like everything was free. And then if he flipped it like too many times in a row, like this corner that was supposed to be guarding just the deep ha- the deep third behind him out of nowhere end up supposed to guard the deep third on the other side of the field. This corner had a deep it just, it turned it <laughs> like bro just broke my whole coverage and <laughs> I'm sitting here trying to make audibles like spamming all the buttons on my controller trying to go around and readjust everybody. Bro. Like bro just broke the game. Like it's this junk is cheating, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. It, it it legitimately is like they know ways to cheat, but like it's technically not I mean it's cheating, but it's like it's the game's fault. Like right. you, you flip your play like once, twice, whatever. Like you try and get a better look, but like, bro, it was doing it every like, bro, would just like he would just pick a play od fast. So he has mad time left on the play clock. Come out, audible, audible, flip, flip, flip. It's crazy because like flip and quick hike. So like all the adjustments I made don't matter. It's crazy because like you would think too. Like like when I used, when we used to play like Madden growing up, like that's not. I didn't want to play like that. Like, I just legitimately wanted to, like, call a play, read the defense. Like, I just wanted to play, man. Right, like like, like, like a football. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, dudes game, don't. Like. Dude, and he's perfectly fine with winning like that all day. Like, he's perfectly fine. Like, uh, to me, that gets boring. Like, I don't even want to do that. That's mad boring. It's not, bro. Like, not saying that you have to, like, you need to really know football or basketball to be good at 2K or Madden. Like, but, bro, that's not even translatable, like, to... Nothing at all. Nothing is, no, nothing is, bro. Nothing you about like actual real life sports. It. It's crazy, bro. And it's supposed to be a simulation. That's just trash. Garbage, Golden games bro. are trash. EA and 2K, bro. Fix y'all games, please, bro. Because hmm. we get starved for some sports games for like years now. Y'all can't put out a good product. It's a damn shame. Disappointing, bro. With that, though, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of the Off the Glass podcast. If you have made it this far in the episode, we appreciate you. If you are on YouTube, be sure to drop a like, comment on the video, um, and subscribe to the channel. If you are on uh, audio platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, go ahead and leave a five-star review and set the show to pre-download. And be sure to follow those socials on the on the bottom, at Off the Glass Pod on Instagram and at Off the Glass Podcast on TikTok. Um, As always, I'm Billy, that's Dame, and we out. Peace. Yes, sir.